On January 8, 1967, Robert Kelly was born in Southside, Chicago. He was the third of four children to be brought into this world by his parents. Early on in his life, his father would abandon Kelly and his siblings, so growing up he didn't have a relationship with his father and was primarily raised by his single mother while living with his grandparents. For most of his adolescence, they lived in a Chicago housing project located in the Bronzeville neighborhood. Growing up, Kelly was described as a quiet kid who enjoyed playing sports, especially the game of basketball. When he was only eight years old, he began to sing in the church choir, discovering his talent for music. At the time, he really just seemed like any other kid on the outside, but sadly, his at-home life could be described as an inferno of abuse for himself and his family members, mainly at the hands of his older siblings and friends of the family who would watch over Kelly while his grandparents and mother were at work or away. From the age of 8 to 14, he and his siblings were frequently abused, and at the age of 15, Kelly was even shot by gang members while riding his bike home. This was an event that he would later say changed his life forever. That same year, he met a teacher who encouraged him to perform a Stevie Wonder song at his school's talent show, and when the crowd went crazy, he realized his true potential. He quit playing basketball, dropped out of school, and began performing down at the Chicago subway. Oh, so long for this night, I prayed. As soon as I said that, the crowd went up. You know, high school kids, it's like, if you got a little bit of talent to them, it's like, wow. Girls were screaming, guys was woo, woo, woo. And I won, you know, and right there was like, Peter Pan being bit by the spider, you know, he became Spider-Man. In 1989, by the time he was 22, he had formed his group MGM, aka Musically Gifted Men. They got their big break on a TV show literally called Big Break, beating out the competition and walking away with $100,000 in prize money. From there, MGM did have some commercial success as a group until 1991 when they disbanded. And only a year later, R. Kelly made his debut album and was already dropping hits like Honey Love and Slow Dance. From the start, this man was creating love-making albums and hits like the world had never seen before. And when he came out with songs like Bump and Grind, he really did cement his spot in the R&B game as he not only performed but also wrote and produced hundreds of smash hits for other artists during this time. I'm talking about the likes of Barry White, Tony Braxton, and Michael Jackson. This is when R. Kelly really started to get critical acclaim, winning Grammys for his work in music. And at this time, it was clear that R. Kelly was truly an example of a rags to riches story. You know, when you pray for something, you know, you, you, you get it better than what you pray for. I just like to thank God who's the head of my life for receiving this award. He's because he's the reason I'm here. And the R&B hip hop artist of the year is... R. Kelly. Not gonna stop till you scream my name and say, ooh, Kelly, you made me holler. Keep on jumping like an impala. Come and get some of this R&B thug, babe. But then after all of this success, in the mid-90s, his 27-year-old self started dating and reportedly married singer Aaliyah at the age of 15. You could say this was the beginning of his strange behavior at least publicly. You know, it's amazing to me how only 18 years ago people were so much more cool about this type of stuff. I mean, just look at Carl Malone, who was a horrible person. Nowadays, the public would rightly label you as a creep. I mean, Aaliyah's debut album was even called Age Ain't Nothing But A Number, where R. Kelly was the lead songwriter and producer. I mean, the jokes really make themselves. They allegedly had this illegal marriage where he lied and told them she was 18 when she was really 15 and eventually this all got called off when her parents found out a year later and canceled their relationship the singer was just 15 years old at the time kelly claimed she was 18 on the marriage certificate that was a whole nother situation a whole nother time it was a it was it was a whole nother a whole nother thing my main question is where were they when all this shit was actually going down everybody seemed to think that y'all are either girlfriend or boyfriend or cousins or <laughs> just let's, let's let's get the record straight better go get me a white jeep <laughs> <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> well, no, we're not related at all. At all. No, all we're not. Right. We're just very close. He's my best friend. Yeah. Oh, in now, the whole wide world. In the whole wide world. For the yeah. record, you are how old? That's a secret. Uh -oh. Women doesn't disclose her. <laughs> 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 
keeping it under wraps. Despite all of this, the general public still loved R. Kelly, and everyone thought it was all good in the hood because he was still dropping hits. He was dropping straight bangers for years and years and years. And then in 1996, another woman stepped forward to file a lawsuit saying that she was intimate with Kelly when she was 15 to 18 years old. This was settled in court, likely to avoid public exposure, and that would be something that would become a common occurrence for Kelly. Is there anything outlandish that we don't know about that you may be getting into? Oh. Other than music? No. I don't believe that for one minute. <laughs> Isn't that hard to I think there must be something uh, lurking I there. I tried to do your face and everything, and it didn't work. I don't believe that for <laughs> one minute. <laughs> Man. <laughs> It was around this time that R. Kelly was releasing songs like I Believe I Can Fly, and he seemed like an unstoppable force in the music industry. But only five years later in 2002, the infamous and disgusting tape came out of allegedly R. Kelly having alleged relations with a reportedly very young looking female. Kelly's attorney says it's not him on the video, and the girl in question will back him up. This charge, in fact, under this case, cannot be proven. I'm not aware of anything like that and and for people, unknown people to make those um, statements against me is, is, is ridiculous. I will say this, I don't know if it was you or not. The person in the tape resembles you a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Do you understand why people are, if that is the case, this person, if it's not you, resembles you, do you understand why they think that in fact it's you body type face etc no because i haven't seen the tape so now a jury must decide if the man who sold 24 million records also made one videotape that could end his career this tape was everywhere in the streets both virtual and in real life and the aunt of the alleged girl later said that she was only 14. i think this is when people really started to realize he was on some weird shit, but still kelly skated the charges and continued his flourishing career with millions of fans i support him even though he is going through this case but i wanted his fans so i support him whatever he does you might be at home talking over the uh, over the kitchen over the dinner table saying oh that's wrong you know I had a chance to see these you know alleged tapes or whatever but i mean i'm certainly keeping him in my prayers um an entertainer certainly affords you a lot of extra attention and, and prying into whatever your personal choices are whether they be right or wrong but i mean who are we to judge he always gonna be one you know the greatest r b singer in my in my eyes you know uh, and i hope that people don't mix you know it's kind of messed up but that, that it happened like that but but i i will hope people just continue to support his music do you like teenage girls when you say teenage, how are we talking? Being a Christian doesn't necessarily mean you're this upright person. Being a Christian is someone who's repented for their sins and said, um, God, forgive me. Sure. And when you say it today, doesn't mean you can't say it tomorrow. And that's why God is who he is. But that can get to be an easy way out after a while, because all well, you're saying is, hey, forgive me again. Though I will note, it was at this time that he began to kind of step out of the limelight. In the years that followed, many young women stepped forward with allegations, most of which were aspiring acts in the entertainment industry, who knew and were around R. Kelly when they were between 13 and 16 years old. But it wasn't until 2008 when he was finally charged and actually taken to court, they wanted to take him down on a P charge for the tape and other alleged tapes he had made over the years. And he must have called Saul because he skated these charges as well like he was chilling at the hockey rink. Obviously at this point he wanted nothing to do with these allegations and even walked out of an interview seven years later in 2015 when a reporter brought them up. I'm talking about the other cases where women have come forward mm -hmm. and said R. Kelly had with me mm. when I was under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. R. Kelly was abusive to me mm -hmm. emotionally and physically and verbally. Okay. R. Kelly took me in a black room where unspeakable things happen. This is what they're saying about you. Not this, true. These, aren't, these aren't old rumors. Not true. Whether they're old rumors, new rumors, Why would they future say this rumors, about you? not true. I there have been multiple fans. accusations against you, against young women in Chicago. And the they are concerned me, about your past, that and that's impacting them, them from all. purchasing your I love music them all. It doesn't matter who they are. If they hate me, they love me, they want to destroy me, whatever, I love them all. And I love you too. You don't need to give me any of your love, love sir. Since then, R. Kelly has had many interesting public appearances, to say the least, and has been in and out of court constantly dealing with all these different cases. He basically acts like Jussie Smollett and talks out of his ass, buying into his own lies. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna this let the camera keep going. This is not true. 
This is not, doesn't even make sense. And at that time, he still had enough money to win case after case. But then in 2017, it got really crazy when he was alleged to have started a cult of at least six women. Kitty quit her job and moved into a compound owned by R. Kelly in Chicago. There were other women living there as well, but she says they were forbidden to communicate with each other. They lived in separate suites. According to Kitty, it was virtually a prison. Part of me is still scared to call it a cult, but that's definitely what it is. People have no idea that there's two different men. That there's the person, Robert, there's the persona, R. Kelly. And he's like, you know, if you're really, you know, 16, that you can tell daddy, right? And he was like, you know, you just look about 14, 15, or 16. People were coming forward saying we need justice against this serial offender, but still nothing happened until later that year when another former victim broke her non-disclosure agreement to talk about her time with the singer in 2008 when she was only 15 herself. Again, more women came forward, and in 2019, the documentary Surviving R. Kelly was finally released to the general public. I feel like this really re-energized the buzz around the story. R. Kelly's this fun, laughing, loving guy. But Robert is the devil, is the devil. And he was later indicted on more charges involving minors, including racketeering, kidnapping, forced labor, and exploitation. This guy paid bail and then he didn't show up to hearing after hearing to delay the court process. At one time, the case even got pushed back because reportedly he had a toenail infection. During this process, in January of 2020, part two of the Surviving R. Kelly documentary series was released, and on March 5th, more charges were added to his laundry list of potential crimes. Eventually, Kelly ended up having to fire his entire legal team, and finally they went to trial in August of 2021, and over the last few months, once this case has been going on, as many alleged victims step forward to provide their story when it comes to the horrors they encountered during their time with R. Kelly. And now finally on June 29, 2022, an absolute bombshell of justice has been bestowed upon the world as R. Kelly has finally been sentenced to 30 years in prison. He recruited fans of his, targeted them. I never thought that I would be here to see him be held accountable for the atrocious things that he did to children. The I Believe I Can Fly singer was convicted on one count of racketeering. The racketeering included 14 underlying acts of exploitation of a child, kidnapping, and bribery. R. Kelly was also convicted on eight violations of the Mann Act, aka the legislation that makes it illegal to transport people across state lines for immoral purposes. Honestly, it just surprises me that the justice system has been taking a few W's lately. Clearly, at this point, he was involved in all kinds of sick shit to try and keep the money rolling in. I'm talking about truly inhumane acts. Personally, I'm glad to see a monster like him be put behind bars. And trust me, there will still be many idiotic R. Kelly fans out here who want him to be free because he made a couple of good songs. This is an incredibly talented person, but also a very sick man. Those two things can both be true. It's safe to say that his time in jail was long overdue. It's like he got away time and time again, so why would he stop? You know, it's like they were enabling him. He honestly felt invincible until that money well started to run dry and that's all you really need to know about our justice system y'all let me know what you guys think about this down below i was kind of surprised this news of him getting 30 years didn't really make the waves in the headlines so i want to know down below in the comments y'all's opinions as always i do want to thank you guys for watching and subscribing today sharing the video with a friend and as you guys know it's been your boy the tan superman and some other crazy ass people out here need to get covered so i'm out peace